And the conservatorship was to secure Orr's NCAA eligibility to play college football. Because he was over 18, they say lawyers advised they couldn't adopt. You can adopt an adult. We're going to look at the law and the facts, and I'm going to show you why the two E's, I think, are playing fast and loose with the facts, but also Michael Orr is playing fast and loose with the facts. Let's get into it. When I first initially covered this story, I said there's always two sides to every story. And boy, was I right. You know, the, hearing the initial allegations from Michael Orr, you made you think like, hey, this is kind of crazy. You know, they didn't even adopt him. They were lying and saying it about the adoption. And now hearing the family response is like, wow, it seems like Michael may have some issues. So before we get into any of the details, let me do this. Let me take this in stages. The first stage is let's first hear the allegations that Michael claimed against the family again. And I'm gonna play NBC News because I have what they said before, what they said when the family responded. And I'm also gonna play to you some other responses in the media to show you how biased the media could be just based off allegations because again, Michael's lawsuit is not even against the family. It's actually just in the conservatorship. But Michael's lawsuit were just allegations. So nobody really knows if any of that stuff is true, right? The conservatorship, you can kind of essentially just say, okay, if, if he wasn't legally adopted and the paperwork is there, you can say, okay, that's true. That's true. But all the other allegations you really don't, don't know until you see kind of, you know, until they test it in court. So let's first start with NBC News, how they played Michael's allegations, then how they played the family's response to the allegations. So here's clip one, NBC News. It was the feel-good hit that won Oscar gold, but now the former NFL star whose real-life story inspired The Blind Side says it was all based on a lie. Kaylee Hartung with the stunning claims. Never had one before. What, a room to yourself? A bet. The 2009 film The Blind Side captured hearts on the big screen, telling the story of future NFL star Michael Orr's adoption by a wealthy Memphis family. But tonight, in a new lawsuit, Orr claims it was all a lie. The Tui family exploited him for their own benefit, and now he wants to sever all legal ties. Orr alleges the Tuis have falsely and publicly represented themselves as the adoptive parents of Michael, but never legally adopted him. Instead, Orr says the couple tricked him in 2004, less than three months after he turned 18, into signing a document that made Sean and Leanne Tui his conservators, giving them full legal control over any of his contracts, but no familial relationship. It's a lie Orr says he discovered to his chagrin and embarrassment just six months ago. Well, conservatorship is very different from an adoption. A conservatorship does not create a family relationship. It creates a legal responsibility. With that power, the petition alleges the Tuies negotiated the movie deal for The Blind Side in 2006. Orr claims the family made millions in royalties, while Orr says he received no payment whatsoever. The Tuies have not responded to comment. But in their 2010 book, In a Heartbeat, they said of the money made from the movie, we divided it five ways. Sean Tuohy Jr. said in an interview today, the family was not surprised by the lawsuit. There were things back in 2020, 2021 that they were like, you know, if you guys give me this much, then I won't go public with things. Michael Orr is now 37 years old and retired after playing eight seasons in the NFL. He is asking the court to end the conservatorship and prohibit the Tuohy's from using his name and likeness and pay him his fair share. So those were some pretty salacious allegations, right? They tricked him into signing conservatorship. They told him he was gonna be an adopted. That was like, like, man, this is like some real scumbaggish type stuff. And it was interesting that a lot of the media essentially took all of that as fact. Like, you know, everything that Michael was saying is fact, even to the point where some news or opinion shows were essentially saying the Tuohy's trafficked Michael as a child. I'm not even joking about this. Run the clip. I'm just trying to figure out how did they, how were they able to take him in if they didn't go through the legal process? If they didn't go through right. the process of adopting. actually adopting him, why was this little black boy just in this white family and nobody thought anything of it? And and then how did he just find out recently? Because that movie came out. Uh, from what 06? I from what yeah, I read, 06, which yeah. is from what I read yesterday, he said he was so busy playing football mm -hmm. that he just wasn't. And I believe it. Paying attention, man. You know? Oh, I just want to know how was this white family able just to have this little black boy and they was trafficking, right? Where did he get the boy from? How you just find a little black baby? Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's what he gives you. He made that song about black little baby. Remember when she did black, black little baby? 
That's what that song was about. White people like that who can just go find black little babies and raise them and nobody says nothing about it. Now to be fair to The Breakfast Club, both left and right wing media were all like up in arms like, ugh, this is this doesn't make any sense. You know, you, they're going around saying that they adopted the kid, but he wasn't adopted. He was really just a conservatorship. You know, everybody kind of felt a way about it, right? They're like, ugh, this was a feel good story. We all appreciated the fact that someone would do this for a, a at risk youth. But now we find out that it may have been just a scam to make the kid, you know, to, to get money from this kid. You know, there's a whole lot of this stuff that was going on in the media. And again, I gotta be fair, it was both left, left wing and right wing sources who were, who were essentially taking Michael Lohr's side because based on the allegations alone. But now we've got the family's side of the story. And I wanna play that for you so we can all have the, the full context of what the family's saying. The family depicted in the hit movie, The Blind Side, is firing back after the football star at the center of the film claimed they never really adopted him. They now accuse him of a shakedown. Here's Kaylee Hartung. Hey, my name's Leanne Tui, my kids go to Wingate. The family made famous in the Oscar-winning film, blindsided by what they call a ludicrous lawsuit filed by Michael Orr. These people are truly devastated. I mean, this was their son. The Tui family attorney speaking out tonight, disputing the former NFL player's accusation that he was tricked into making the Tuies his conservators in 2004 instead of being adopted. We're talking about a family trying to help someone in need. Uh, the Tuies did not control any of Mr. Orr's finances. The attorney's also hammering Orr's claim that he was unaware of the conservatorship until six months ago, calling out his 2011 book where Orr writes, Sean and Leanne would be named as my legal conservators. Honestly, I didn't care what it was called. We were a family. The family insisting the conservatorship was to secure Orr's NCAA eligibility to play college football. Because he was over 18, they say lawyers advised they couldn't adopt. At the center of all of this is money. The Tuies alleging or threatened them in an attempted shakedown for $15 million before filing suit, claiming he was lied to and exploited. Are you going to protect the family, Michael? Yes, ma'am. Orr says the Tuies gave away the rights to his life story for the blind side while they profited. Now he wants the money he believes he's owed. They've never needed his money. Mr. Tuies sold his company for $220 million. A source close to the film tells NBC News the Tuies received approximately $700,000 total. Michael got every dime, every dime he had coming. Or wants an end to the conservatorship, and the Tuies say they will never oppose that. Okay, so there is a lot of misinformation that seems to be occurring with this case, and we're going to clear a lot of it up in this video. So. The first thing, let's talk with about the allegations one by one. So the first allegation is that Michael didn't receive any money from the movie The Blind Side and that the family essentially took that money and kept it amongst themselves and didn't give him anything. But the attorneys for the Tuies came out yesterday and essentially said, no, we did give him month proceeds from the movie. We gave him $100,000 because essentially they said they only got $500,000 and split it five ways amongst the family. And to prove that, they allegedly say they have a check that was given to Michael to show it. Here it is in the New York Post. So is Michael lying? Did he forget that he got this $100,000 check? You know, again, they haven't produced the check, but if it's true that they paid him with the check, there's a paper trail of that, and if, they, and if it's true they gave him $100,000, that makes Michael's story seem to be a lie. And it makes him seem like he's not being honest with the facts because that's a big difference to say that I didn't get what I should have gotten versus I didn't get anything. Because remember, the allegation was Michael said he didn't get any proceeds from the movie. And now the family's saying, no, we can prove you did. We have the receipts. You got a check. Here it is. Now, the next allegation was about the conservatorship versus adoption. So, for instance, a conservatorship is generally when someone can't take care of themselves, you become their conservator, making you have giving you the ability to make all their legal decisions. Britney Spears is the, probably one of the most famous cases of this. And then remember, it took her a long time to even get out of that conservatorship where her father was able to control her life, medical choices, you know, where she worked, everything. 
versus an adoption where an adoption is you becoming part of that person's family and an adoption is permanent but a conservatorship is just temporary now everybody jumped on the conservatorship was like oh this is so horrible it's so horrible because you know they essentially tricked michael into a conservatorship versus an adoption now michael has said that he has always believed that the conservatorship and adoption was essentially the same thing. Here's an excerpt from his book that he wrote in 2011 explaining what he thought about the conservatorship versus adoption thing. It kind of felt like a formality as I'd been a part of the family for more than a year at that point. Since I was already over the age of 18 and considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne would be named as my legal conservators. They explained to me that it means pretty much the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were just written in a way that took my age into account. Honestly, I didn't care what it was called. I was just happy that no one could argue that we weren't legally what we already knew was real. We were a family. So what Michael said in that 2011 book, in full context, is exactly what he said earlier that, hey, I was fooled. I thought the conservatorship and the adoption were the same thing because that's what I was told. And it was all because I was 18 and couldn't be adopted. And then the Tuohys also said that in their response that, yeah, we couldn't adopt him because the lawyer said that he was over 18. Now, this is the shocking part. You can adopt adults in Tennessee. That's a total lie. The fact that they're saying that you can't adopt an adult in Tennessee is a lie. You can adopt an adult in Tennessee. Let's just look at the law. It's a, it's a simple lookup. You can actually look this up for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Look this up. Here it is. Here is Tennessee Code Title 36, Domestic Relations 36-1-101. Now, this is the Tennessee statute for adoptions and let's look at a the primary purpose of this part is to provide means and procedures for the adoption of children and adults that recognize and effectuate to the greatest extent possible the rights and interests of the persons affected by adoptions okay so now it seems like i don't know which side to believe michael says he didn't get a dime from the movie the blind side the lawyers come and say, well, hey, no, he did get a dime. Matter of fact, he had $100,000. You know how? Because we have a check to show that he got the $100,000. Michael seems to be lying. If that's true, it hurts his credibility a lot. But on the other side, the two are saying, well, hey, the lawyer said we couldn't adopt adults in Tennessee since he was 18. We had to do a conservatorship. That was the only way. But now you know that for a fact is not true because the law in Tennessee literally says you can adopt adults. Who's lying? Now, I understand a lot of you may be like, well, I didn't even know, realize you can adopt adults. But if you go, when you go to law school, there's a series of cases I like to call the adoption cases. And before there was same sex marriage, gay couples wanted to be able to give their spouse some legal protections. Because let's say, for instance, I get sick then the only person that can really see you in a hospital is like your next of kin or close relatives. So in same sex relationships, since they didn't have that, they couldn't get married, they weren't considered to be close relatives. So you couldn't actually go to the hospital and see, you know, your dying spouse because of the, of the way the laws were. So what they would do is they would adopt each other. Like, like the one person would adopt the, their spouse and that would give them that legal right to say, okay, this is my close family member because they're adopted to me, even though they were technically married. And then, you know, in law school, you have a series of cases where those relationships go to, to waste. And now people are trying to get rid of an adoption or get out of an adoption. So, it, you know, it became a, a very interesting series of cases. So this is not something new. And so as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, wow, Tennessee might be one of those states that don't allow adult adoptions. But no, they do. They allow adult adoptions. So the two weeks whole response that they couldn't adopt him because he was 18 it's factually incorrect. And they said a lawyer told them that. So that lawyer is factually incorrect. How, how, how didn't they just look up the statute? Just like I did. And again, like I keep saying, don't just trust me. You go look it up yourself. So let me know in the comment section, who do you believe? Michael Law has been seemingly caught in this lie that he got money that he said he didn't get. And now the two ways are getting caught in this lie saying that they couldn't adopt him at 18, which it seems obviously they could. So I don't know who's telling the truth here, but I thought the facts should be cleared up and you guys should get the full context of what's going on. And let me know in the comment section how you're coming out. My name is Nate the Lawyer. I'm out. Peace.